Hi everybody, uh, my name is William Ng and welcome to my shop here in Anaheim, California. Today I'm very happy and excited to be working with Poplar Woodworking on doing a video on one of my favorite topics which is the green and green furniture. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how I do some of the elements like the uh, protruding ebony spline, ebony plugs, breadboard ends, indent uh, uh, leg details, and uh, maybe a couple other things uh, that I might come up with. Um, I'm going to be going through some of the jigs that I have here and I'm probably going to explain it as I go along uh, to show you how I do these things. There are many things I like about the green and green style furniture. I like their um, Asian influence, their subtlety, a lot of the details even though it's pretty cool it doesn't scream out at you. Um, one of the things that I like is the protruding ebony spline that you probably see on, on the breadboards. Uh, I like the, how they accentuate their joinery their, their box joints or dovetail joints, uh, they actually accentuate and kind of highlight the, the, the joints. I like some of the lifts that's on the bottom there. Um, just the overall piece is very quiet, but it, but it speaks a lot. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make our breadboards. This is our breadboard. It's about an eighth of an inch thicker than my tabletop because I want a sixteenth of an inch protruding on each side. So the first thing I want to do is I want to cut my, my groove. The joint that we're going to be using is called a tongue and groove. We're going to put the groove in the breadboard and then we're going to put the tongue on the tabletop. Now the depth of cut for the breadboard or the groove is going to be half inch deep and then the tongue is going to be about sixteenth of an inch shorter because I don't want the tongue to be bottoming it out on my mortise. So to mark out my uh, mortise here, or the groove, I'm going to find center, and I want the groove to be approximately 5 16th. It doesn't have to be exact, just approximate. So I'm just going to put my ruler here, uh, find center, and maybe 5 30 seconds on each side, that would give me about 5 16th. Now it's very important that um, when I'm cutting, that I would cut the top mark off first, because if for any reason, if my breadboard comes off the table, I'll be cutting the bottom side, the waist side. And there is no way that you can ever push hard enough that it will ever cut past the line on the top because the table will, will prevent you from doing that. So I'm going to go to the router table and I'm going to set up my uh, router bit to be cutting my top uh, cut first, okay? And then I want to start um, an inch away from each side. I'm going to start right about here and I'm going to route across and I'll just stop over there and I'll just pull out. I'll flip it over and I'll do the same cut. This way my groove will be exactly dead on center. So I'm going to go to the router table and let's do this. So I got my router bit right there, right at the top line. So I'm going to cut that one first. Lock it in. I'll bring my fence across. I have a few marks right here that tells me when I'm going to start and where I'm going to uh, pull out. It's about an inch away from the uh, router bit. It really doesn't matter if you're off by you know a quarter of an inch. It really doesn't matter. Just as kind of a, a reference mark. So here we go. Okay, so here is my groove. Now I'm going to go use a uh, handheld router and uh, do my tongue. Now that we got the groove cut, I want to know how thick do I need to cut my tenons to make it fit. So the first thing I do is I would take a measurement using a caliper. I would find the thickness of my tenon or the groove here. Right now it is reading 0.357. So now I have to cut this to 0.357. So I'm going to route the top and I'm going to route the bottom, leaving uh, 0.357 behind. So 
that's just a little bit bigger than 5 16th. So here I'm just going to find center. Okay, my, my mark. That's going to be my tenon. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to route, leaving that mark behind. It's going to be thicker than what I need. This way I can take a caliper, measure it, and see how much I'm off, and then I can just dial it in using my uh, micro adjustment.